the universal product code system. I'm sure you have seen the horizontal scanners at the grocery stores which are used to read the UPC symbols off of the items you are buying, so that the computer will automatically print the price of that item. They obviously have the capability of scanning your hand. For a time, a few years ago, I began to see upright scanners. With a flat scanner, the cashier only had to slide the item across the scanning plate, but with the upright scanner, the cashier has to lift the item up in front of the scanner. I was amazed the first time I seen one, because right away I knew that its purpose wasn't to make things easier for the cashier, it was to make it easier to scan your forehead and hand. Recent versions have placed them lower on the checkout station. I haven't seen a lot of them, so I don't know if the retail industry as a whole is going to upgrade to this version of the scanner. We have been talking about future developments, so let's talk about the present. Do you realize that with the Universal Product Code, UPC, we are already buying and selling under the number 666? In 1970, the National Association of Food Chains, and five other major trade associations representing manufacturers, wholesalers, and retailers, met, and formed an ad hoc committee to set up guidelines for an encoding system that could be accepted by the entire industry. In 1971, a code management committee came up with the concept of a 10-digit numerical code, the first five to identify the manufacturer, and the last five to identify the specific item. In 1972, the Uniform Grocery Product Code Council Incorporated and Distribution Codes Incorporated, in charge of assigning numbers, was established, with thousands of companies invited to become members. On April 3, 1973, the Ad Hoc Committee announced that they had selected a 12-digit barcode that could be printed by conventional methods, and be scanned omnidirectionally by an automated system. By the end of 1974, the Uniform Grocery Product Code Council had changed their name to the Uniform Product Code Council Incorporated, and had 21 representatives from manufacturers, distributors, and trade associations on their board. Around 2,600 companies, representing a total of $70.7 .7 billion in annual sales, had become members of the Code Council, and were utilizing the bar coding on their products. The UPC system functions like this. The prices are marked on the shelf and not the item although some chains continue to put prices on the items. As the items are carried down the conveyor belt, the cashier pulls the item, symbol downward, across the scanner, and bags the item. The scanner contains a laser beam which emits a beam of light. The white bars or spaces will reflect more light than the black bars, which is measured by a light detector. A time measurement of how long the beam takes to move across the bar and space, is also used for decoding. The scanner reads the symbol, no matter what direction it is passed over the scanner, from several inches, to a foot away, decoding the number and sending the number to a computer. The computer transmits to the electronic cash register, the price of the product, which is indicated on a display, and printed on the receipt tape. Checkout time is speeded up by 60 to 70% over the conventional method, eliminating the need for as many employees. When the register totals the purchase, the printed receipt tape usually indicates the store name, number, and location, item name, item price, whether it is taxable, and the total. It allows for payment in cash, food stamps, check, debit card, or credit card, and deducts the coupons which are presented. It tells how much change is received, the date, time, and lane number. Besides the quickness and efficiency, another feature of the system is the ability to automatically keep track of inventory. Left hand guide bar, 101 two black bars and one white bar, represents the number 6, and tells the computer that information is coming. Center bar, 010103 white bars and two black bars, which represents the number 6, and separates the design. Right hand guide bar, 101 two black bars and one white bar represents the number 6, and tells the computer that the information is complete. The regular size of the barcode is 1.469x1.020, but it can be printed from 80% of that size, to twice that size. It must appear in a rectangular block on the bottom, side or back panel of a product, or anywhere it can be scanned. The barcode is a series of black and white parallel bars, 30 black and 31 white, for 10 digits, with white margins on each side. Each digit of the code is represented by two black bars, and two white bars, which is composed of seven data elements or modules. A module may be white or black. A white or black bar can be made up of one, two, three, or four modules. Modules are all the same width, being that they are the foundation of the system, and create the bars which are visible to the naked eye. If you look at the diagram of the UPC symbol, you will notice that the symbol is split into two sides, a left-hand side, using an odd number of modules, and a right-hand side, 
using an even number of modules, making them opposite of each other. Thus, it doesn't matter if the symbol is entered upside down. For each set of seven modules is a number, and each number is represented by a field whose optical bars are broken down into the following binary codes, where 0 equals a blank space, and 1 equals a black bar. Set 1, left side, 0 to 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 2 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 2 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 3 2 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 4 2 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 5 2 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 6 2 0 1 0 1 1 1 1 7 2 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 8 2 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 9 2 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 Set 2, right side 0 to 1 million 110 thousand 10 1 to 1 million 100 thousand 110 2 to 1 million 100 1 thousand 103 to 1 million 10 4 to 1 million 11 thousand 105 to 1 million 1 thousand 110 6 to 1 million 10 thousand 7 to 1 million 108 to 1 million 1009 to 1 million 110 thousand 100. The UPS code begins with a number system character on the left of the symbol. 0 equals grocery 1 equals unknown 2 equals variable weight items such as fruit, meat and produce. 3 equals national drug code and health related items. 4 equals reserved for NDC and Harik. If manufacturer identification code on left has to be expanded to 11 digits, first 5 on the left side, 6th will be placed at the right of the symbol. 5 equals reserved for use on coupon 6 equals encodes a 12 digit code when the code must be expanded. 7 equals unknown 8 equals unknown 9 equals encodes a 12 digit code in stores where more information is needed on symbol. The first group of numbers, generally 5, is the manufacturer's code, and the second group of numbers, generally 5, is the manufacturer product code, such as an item number. The code ends with a check character, to the right of the symbol, whose purpose is to check for errors, such as an unauthorized addition of lines that could result in the computer reading the wrong number. There are various other UPC code designs that have been utilized such as the zero suppression method, design number two, second most commonly used design, which permits zeros to be eliminated from the 10 digit code number, thereby narrowing it to six numbers, which reduces the width of the symbol so it can fit on a product with a smaller package. Known as truncation, this method also reduces the height by shortening the length of the vertical lines, but it also reduces the computer's effectiveness in reading the symbol omnidirectionally. It is the second most commonly used UPC design. Mary Stuart Rilf believed that the intention of this alternate design was to ensure that the general public would not crack the UPC code. It actually represents half of the regular symbol. The design incorporates bar codes from the first and second sets, and from a third set created from the second set. There is an extended version of the main design, design number three, for use on magazines and books. While the main portion of the design will only use bar codes from the first and second sets, the extended area on the right side of the symbol will use bar codes from all three sets. Going back to Revelation 13 17, it says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Incredibly, as you have seen, through the use of the UPC system of encoding products, we are actually buying and selling with the number 666. The left and right hand guides, and center bar patterns in design number one, is designated by the following binary codes. Left hand guide, 101 center bar pattern, 01010 right hand guide, 101. Just to verify, when you consider the number 6 when used as a data character, as in the second set, the number 6 is encoded as 1,010,000. In other words, the only visible modules of the number 6, is the designation of 101, which is used in the left and right hand guides, and the center bar pattern. Since the data characters use a 7 module encodation, and the two guides and center pattern consist of 3 and 5 modules, it is obvious that the two numerical encodations are different. While the numbers at the middle of the UPC symbol represent the manufacturer code, and the manufacturer product code, the numbers encoded in the two guide bars and center bar pattern, represent the number 666. This 666 code can be found in every UPC symbol. In design number 2, which is half of design number 1, it incorporates a third bar code for the number 6, which is represented by half of the center bar pattern, or a module pattern of 010. The number 6 is a prominent part of the UPC, symbol. In design number 1, there are 6 numbers on the left side, and 6 numbers on the right side. There are 6 numbers in design number 2. There are 6 different variations of the UPC symbol. 6 is the perfect computer number, a fact, which, according to the Wall Street Journal, November 11, 1981, 
led Apple Computer Inc. to introduce their Apple I units at a price of $666.66. Richard J. Mindlin, Executive Vice President of the Uniform Product Code Council had said. There are no unidentified characters in the symbol, as each encodation serves either as data characters or for information to indicate to the scanner to start or stop reading. These start and stop characters are not the same as the encodation for the digit 6. George J. Lauer, who invented the UPC in 1973 has said, There is nothing sinister about this nor does it have anything to do with the Bible's mark of the beast. It is simply a coincidence like the fact that my first, middle, and last name all have six letters. There is no connection with an international money code either. As of November 2000, Mr. Lauer has stopped responding to questions about this. I can understand his contention that he is being accused of creating something that is inherently evil. We have been quick to attach a negative connotation to it, but the fact of the matter is, Bible prophecy has been fulfilled, we are buying and selling with the number 666. That is undeniable. The Apostle John made a prophetic observation he gave us a sign to look for. So, regardless of all the mechanics of how we got there, we are there. Those stores who already have electronic fund transfer, EFT, capabilities, and are accepting debit cards, are pulling funds directly from a customer's checking account, and transferring it to the store's account at the bank. At this point, it is not known if the system can accept an international debit card, however it is reasonably safe to assume that the system was created to accommodate the final step, or the mark of the beast. Besides the warning in Revelation 14.10 not to take this mark, the law of Moses in Leviticus 19.28 said, Ye shall not, print any marks upon you. Revelation 16.2 indicates that those who take the mark will be stricken with a grievous sore. Senator Frank Church said in August, 1975, that the government has the technological capacity to impose total tyranny if ever a dictator came to power. There would be no place to hide. The Antichrist will be that dictator. With the potential of money and debit cards being lost or stolen, the idea of a number being applied with a laser to your skin may also be going by the wayside because of it being exposed to external conditions. It seems as though very chip technology being tested now will be the means through which people will be made part of the beast system. The purpose of the mark is to make a person totally dependent upon the government, and to serve as a surveillance tool. When Revelation 14:17 says that you won't be able to buy or sell without the mark, this is an obvious financial connection. When the economic infrastructure of this country is totally converted to a system that is completely cashless, everything will then be in place for the implantable identification technology. Your pay will be direct deposited, your bills will be automatically withdrawn from your checking account, and when you go to the grocery store, to the doctor, or to get gas, if you don't have a chip, you will not be able to buy or sell, because you will not have a means to access your account. Those who do not take the mark will be harassed by the government, and eventually be targeted for arrest and detention. True Christians, who refuse to take the mark, will become fugitives when their rights are taken away.